Well, by looking around, I can say this time I'm in a happy situation because I do not have to apologize. It's not fully gender balanced, but let's say for those who are assisting council and presidency meetings, sometimes we do better. So there is not social progress also in your own network, which is important. We have, we have a little bit short of time because you, this will go until one o'clock, because at one o'clock we will have the speech of Antonio and they will be directly on TV. So if you want to be on TV and you want to have a smiling Prime Minister, respect the time, which is for sure sharp and which needs to, means for me that I have to invite you to respect more or less, than meaning more or less than more, the five minutes to pay speak. As we are in Portugal, I would like to start with Jose Antonio Vieira da Silva, who we met already 10 years ago when I was president of the social platform, and we were really happy to be here in Portugal under the Portuguese presidency. And sometimes also we just forget what we have achieved under the Spanish, under the Portuguese, and other, under the Luxembourg presidencies. I think that we need to speak more often on what we do and what we work upon. So how do you see this pillar of social rights? Is it just something that inspires us from time to time? Is it something which is far away from the North, has no relevance for you? Or where do you see also here from this country, in this particular time where growth has come back, where you have positive results in elections, how can this be some kind of compass also for your future work as Minister of Labor and your government? Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I'm going to speak in Portuguese. Bom dia a todos. O, o pilar social, gostaria de saudar todos os presentes, naturalmente, os meus colegas de painel. O pilar social é verdadeiramente um instrumento decisivo para o nosso futuro coletivo. O pilar social é a expressão de um virar de página. Tem de ser a expressão de um virar de página. Perguntam-nos se a Europa Social é uma questão decisiva neste momento. Julgo que podemos dizer que é, é a questão decisiva para o futuro da Europa. Porque é na dimensão social que nós podemos reconstruir a confiança no projeto europeu. É com a dimensão social, é com a Europa social, que nós podemos reaproximar as mulheres e homens do nosso espaço, da nossa Europa, das instituições, da política, da confiança no futuro. Na confiança nas instituições que foi fortemente abalada durante estes cerca de 10 anos de várias crises que vivemos. E foi explorando essa fragilidade, esse afastamento dos cidadãos europeus da sua Europa que cresceram os movimentos populistas, que cresceu a extrema-direita e que nós, da família social-democrata, perdemos peso importância e capacidade de influenciar o futuro da Europa. O pilar europeu dos direitos sociais tem de ser algo onde nós assumimos a liderança. Não seremos naturalmente os únicos atores, mas temos que ser os atores decisivos na construção do pilar europeu dos direitos sociais. Chega a existência de um pilar europeu dos direitos sociais? Não. Claramente que não. Nós precisamos mais do que o pilar europeu. Precisamos que o conjunto das políticas europeias valorizem a sua dimensão social. Todas as políticas europeias têm que estar ligadas à sua dimensão social. Têm que ver refletidas nas suas prioridades, nos seus instrumentos, nas suas opções, esta preocupação com a dimensão social do projeto europeu. 
porque não há projeto europeu sem dimensão social e não há dimensão social sem a liderança da família social-democrata. A Europa social tem que ter neste pilar, seguramente, uma das suas referências. Mas não o pode conceber como uma espécie de penso rápido para tratar as fraturas sociais. As fraturas sociais têm que ser atacadas na sua origem. E a sua origem está ligada à construção do conjunto de políticas, do mix de políticas ao nível económico, ao nível financeiro, ao nível fiscal, a todos os níveis que são relevantes para a vida dos europeus. Finalmente, chega a provarmos uma proclamação e inscrever o pilar europeu como dimensão fundamental da nossa vida coletiva? Não. Não chega. É necessário que o pilar europeu se transforme num plano de ação e que esse plano de ação produza resultados. Sem resultados, o pilar europeu não será o instrumento de virar de página que nós ambicionamos. Resultados no emprego, na melhoria da proteção social e na melhoria da percepção que os cidadãos têm da Europa. É na construção das percepções, é na construção da forma como nos relacionamos com o presente e com o futuro que nós bloqueamos o avanço populista, que bloqueamos o avanço da extrema-direita e que recolocamos como objetivo fundamental a social-democracia como força liderante do projeto europeu, como sempre foi e como sempre terá de ser. Muito obrigado. Obrigado. Thank you very much for reminding that besides opening a way and paving the way to a more social and cohesive Europe, we need to work on results and it must have an impact of the life of citizens. If not, it is a nice blue book and will be again a blueprint. So Nicola, you are Minister of Labour in Luxembourg. You have been accompanying all this process for many years. You also remember the Lisbon agenda, you remember the European social agenda, you probably also remember 20 years ago the employment summit that we had in Luxembourg, and it took only 20 years to have another social summit. So where do you see now the challenge for the pillar of social rights? And if we discuss, as we have heard also in the last two days, the relevance of the process that we call in technical terms upward convergence, how can we make sure that between let me say in all modesty, rich countries like Luxembourg and others which are not in an easy situation, how can we make it attractive for both, for those who have a high level, who are afraid of losing, and those who have a low level, who do not see how they can reach the high level? Thank you very much. First, I want to say one word to our Portuguese colleagues. Uh, there was one formula used for years now, that was the formula TINA. There is no alternative. And I think now our Portuguese colleagues have clearly shown that there is an alternative. There is an alternative. There is an alternative to austerity. There is an alternative for those people who have suffered most from the crisis, but also from the policies which were implemented in this crisis time. So thank you for giving us this very important tool and argument. Now, I think it was said this morning, there is a new momentum in Europe. There is a window of opportunity, call, uh, call it as you want. And we have now to take this momentum and seize it. And certainly, the pillar of social rights gives us a very useful, a very strong instrument to really progress, to progress in terms of building a more protective Europe, building a Europe which really goes back to the citizens. So now it's up to us to fill this pillar with content, 
to give it a very concrete, concrete uh, dimension. And therefore, first, it is indispensable to work on an action plan because people like this idea of a pillar, but if they have the impression that's just an idea and not something which goes into their private, personal lives, well, they will forget it very rapidly. And even it could backfire against those who put in place this pillar, first thing. Second, we have, and I noticed this morning that there are interesting ideas to uh, reform the uh, monetary union. Well, if it's possible to integrate the fiscal compact, <laughs> even with some uh, caveats, into uh, the uh, community frame, it should be possible now, I say now, to integrate also, at least to build bridges from this community uh, framework and the social pillar in order to give it a clear implementation dimension. So this is the first thing. So if we succeed, and that's up to our family to do, because the conservatives, they will never do it, and they will find all kinds of arguments not to do it. So this is a challenge for us, and that's also what we have really put into, uh, uh, into the public opinion now. Third thing, what about the rich and the... Yes, it is absolutely fundamental for richer countries that convergency works. Because if convergency doesn't work, first, it's a threat for Europe. Europe will be weakened. Europe will fall apart. And that's not in the interest of the less developed or less rich, nor in the interest of the more... Uh, 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 of the richer countries. So we want convergency because it's in the interest of all Europeans and in the north and in the south. So for a country like Luxembourg, we really have always pleaded in favor of strong solidarity into Europe. Solidarity, it's not what the conservatives tell. It's transfer from north to south. No, that's not solidarity. That's not what happens. Solidarity is an investment in our common future. And that's what we have to do. Yeah, please take your mobile phones and tweet, solidarity is investment. Uh, and socialists are fighting for social investment because this is a matter where we have to speak about. And indeed, I think the question, what can be the social action plan and how can we really implement this idea with the fiscal compact? This is a question which goes to Bulgaria because we are very happy to have you, not only because we need really a balanced Europe between the north, the south, the east and the west and the southeast. It's also because you have a huge responsibility soon the first EU presidency. We know there is always a debate, what can you achieve in the presidency? There are a lot of experienced countries like Portugal and others, but I think you can be the motor of really implementing the social pillar and the elements we have just been mentioned. The floor is yours, please. Cornelia Ninova, chair of the Bulgarian Socialist Party. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, dear friends. I will speak in Bulgarian. It's a good way to draw the attention of the audience because now everybody <laughs> has to take it off and everybody will listen attentively to you. Except me because it's broken. Uh, like, like we say in French, le progrès ne vaut que s'il est partagé par tous. Are you ready? Най-напред бих искала да поздравя нашите португалски домакини и да ги поздравя с успехите, които имат. Скъпи приятели, в последните години Европа преживя няколко кризи. Финансова, економическа, бежанска. Но резултатите от тези кризи се отразиха най-вече в социалната сфера и на социалните права на европейските граждани. Загуба на работни места, стягане на коланите и намаляване на доходите, загуба на възможности, равни възможности между всички европейски граждани. Защо се стигна до тук? Защото подменихме правенето на политика с политика на технокрацията. 
защото економическата политика, вместо да създава условия за производство и работни места, създаваше условия за добро развитие на финансовите пазари и на капиталите. Сега сме изправени пред въпросите на къде да върви Европа. Имаме петте възможности, предложени в бялата книга на господин Юнкер. България поема председателството точно в този ключов момент, когато ще говорим за напускането на Великобритания, за беженската криза, за пъти по който трябва да вървим, за бюджета в следващия програмен период. Ние, българските социалисти, заедно с всички вас, партията на европейските социалисти, Сергей, лично благодаря, изработихме своя визия за бъдещето на Европа, която се казва повече социална Европа за хората. И направихме така в българския парламент, където сме в опозиция, че тази наша визия да бъде включена в едно общо решение на българския парламент, което представлява програмата за бъдещето председателство от 1 януари. Тоест, ние имаме своя първи реален успех в налагането на социалния стълб, след като той стана национално решение на българския парламент и ще присъства в програмата на българското председателство. В този свой социален стълб обръщаме внимание на това, че всеки опит да се ограничи Европейския съюз само до общия ни пазар, води до подкопаване на устоите ни. Защото нашите устои са социалните права, справедливост, равенство, благополучие на гражданите. Но в последните години налаганата економическа политика превърна гражданите от субекти в обекти от цел на економиката в нейно средство. Наистина Европа е в по-добра економическа кондиция. Имаме економическо развитие, има растеж, но безработицата и липсата на перспектива пред много европейски граждани остава проблем. 17 милиона младежи са без работа днес. И аз поделям казаното вчера от господин Тимерманс, че младите са бъдещето и на тях трябва да обърнем внимание. Младите са спящия великан, който трябва да събудим. Какво направихме в България, за да ги ангажираме към европейската тема, към политиката? Направихме едно проучване какво младите биха искали от политиката и политиците и какво не харесват в нас. И отговора беше искаме да можем да учим. Следователно, ние трябва да им създадем условия да учат, да се квалифицират, преквалифицират, да има учене през целия живот. На второ място казват, искаме чиста вода, чиста храна, чист въздух. Следователно, ние трябва да гарантираме тази чистота на околната среда на младите хора. И на трето казват, искаме да ни помогнете да започваме самостоятелен бизнес, да стартираме свой малък семейен бизнес. Следователно, трябва да приориентираме политиката на Европейския съюз от защита на големите, на корпорациите, към защита на малките, на тези, които да искат да стартират собствен малък и семейен бизнес. Но най-важното, което ни казаха младите хора на България, не харесваме политиката и политиците, защото се затваряте някъде, вземате решения за нас, и за нашето бъдеще, без да разговаряте с нас и да ни питате нас. Следователно, и тук трябва да променим подхода си. Да не разговаряме сами с себе си за бъдещето на младите, а да разговаряме с тях за тяхното бъдеще. Следващ въпрос, който поставяме ние в това председателство е за двойните стандарти, и изравняване на неравенствата в Европейския съюз. Не само между гражданите, не само между богати и бедни, а между различните държави членки. Не искаме Европа на няколко скорости. И моля ви, няма много време да говоря дълго, но моля помислете да излезем заедно с една конкретна обща позиция, която е проблем в моята държава, но сигурно и в много други ваши, от вашите държави. Двойните стандарти на храните. Ето нещо конкретно, което ни различава и раздалечава. Нека нашето семейство да имаме обща позиция, че не е 
достойно и не е справедливо в Европа да има различни стандарти и качество на храните. И последно. Очевидно трябва да променим Европа, ако искаме да я спасим. Но тази промяна не изисква някакви колосални усилия или да измислим нещо генерално ново. Просто трябва да се върнем там, откъдето тръгна Европа. Към нейните изконни ценности. А те са за солидарност, справедливост и равни възможности за всеки европейски гражданин. Благодаря ви и успех на форума ни. Благодаря ви. Thank you very much and thank you for drawing the attention to the issue of youth and what young people are expecting. And normally we have the young European socialists who remind us this and think it's good that the, the Bulgarian Socialist Party chair is reminding what is next, what are the expectations of the young people. Let's move to Katyusha Marini, the chair of the PS group in the Committee of Regions. I think regional policies we have understood, it's not only because of Corinna Cretu, our commissioner, commissioner from our family, who is working on these issues, but really how to see how, what can we do to bring the, the idea of the pillar of social rights down, not to us because it's born, but down to the cities and to the areas where people live and to the different regions. And how do you see the challenge of convergence? Because never forget what is in the treaty. In the treaty we have territorial and social convergence. Please, if you could, sorry for that, if you could stick to four minutes, I will be less criticized by the organizers. Thank you. Grazie. Uh, Anch'io ringrazio gli amici portoghesi e i compagni per uh, l'ospitalità e ringrazio anche Antonio Costa che da sindaco di Lisbona è stato un protagonista dell'attività del Comitato delle Regioni del gruppo socialista e quindi il Comitato delle Regioni è un buon vivaio di primi ministri di successo dei socialisti e dei progressisti in Europa. Grazie. Ma credo il pilastro sociale vincerà la sua scommessa se la vincerà nelle città e nelle regioni. Le città e le regioni sono il luogo nel quale vediamo il volto delle persone, le persone che si attendono le risposte concrete ai propri bisogni e questa scommessa per i socialisti sarà una scommessa anche di successo se saremo in grado di calare nelle attività e nella concretezza dell'azione locale e regionale una risposta a questa sfida che non è determinata solo dalla crisi, la crisi ci ha presentato uno spettro di bisogni nuovi della popolazione con la perdita dei posti di lavoro, con le diseguaglianze che sono cresciute, con un certo impoverimento ma il tema del pilastro sociale lo abbiamo anche nel cambiamento e nell'innovazione. Il cambiamento e l'innovazione e anche la crescita non necessariamente una crescita che produce redistribuzione e crea così tanti nuovi posti di lavoro. E allora è una sfida anche sul cambiamento, non solo sulla protezione che resiste nella crisi, ma anche come mettiamo in, in campo un'innovazione sociale di azioni, di risposte, di politiche che sono in grado di accompagnare la società dell'immediato futuro. I giovani non ci chiedono soltanto un posto di lavoro, non un posto di lavoro qualunque, ci chiedono di avere un progetto sul proprio futuro, il diritto alla mobilità, il diritto ad un investimento sulla propria vita, il diritto di realizzare quello per cui hanno studiato, il diritto di essere protagonisti al cambiamento nell'era digitale e globale. I fenomeni migratori ci aprono uno scenario non solo di accoglienza nelle nostre società ma anche di redistribuzione tra nord e sud del mondo. Le città e le regioni si misurano su tutto questo. Allora eh, non solo noi crediamo nella coesione e nella convergenza ma eh, dato questa mattina Sergei ha detto non ci sono le politiche senza le risorse. No? Allora c'è anche un tema che questo pilastro sociale gli dobbiamo dare anche la concretezza eh, di un'azione finanziaria ma anche di una scelta di rotta orizzontale su tutte le nostre politiche e dobbiamo accogliere anche la sfida come socialisti se si pensa che il pilastro sociale lo alimentiamo sostituendo il fondo sociale europeo con le misure che metteremo nel pilastro sociale eh, la somma sarà zero e se invece saremo in grado di renderla prioritario il pilastro sociale perché realizzandolo 
cambiamo anche la qualità delle nostre città, delle nostre regioni e apriamo più opportunità, dobbiamo crederci anche mettendo in campo risorse e ci dobbiamo credere come priorità anche finanziarie e forse dal pilastro sociale possiamo ricavare la crescita e non solo dalla crescita le risorse per il pilastro sociale, insomma dobbiamo anche rovesciare le priorità. Crediamo ancora nella politica di coesione, anche su questo ci dobbiamo credere, senza convergenza e senza coesione dentro le nostre regioni, che ci sono disuguaglianze interne alle nostre regioni, tra le regioni europee e tra l'Europa e il resto del mondo, quindi la politica di coesione ci deve aiutare ancora a fare questo e ci vuole una politica di coesione che non si limiti al fondo di sviluppo regionale ma che abbia entrambi i pilastri, quello sociale e quello di sviluppo, quello di crescita, quello economico. Allora, le regioni e le città vogliono dare eh, il nostro gruppo socialista come esperienze che abbiamo anche realizzato all'interno delle comunità, anche di fronte alle buone pratiche che sono state messe in campo dalle nostre amministrazioni e dalle nostre esperienze, il pilastro sociale può essere un elemento non solo distintivo, non solo un pezzo dell'agenda politica, ma anche il luogo di un'elaborazione innovativa dei socialisti e dei progressisti in Europa. Se facciamo questo credo che costruiremo anche delle nuove alleanze e delle alleanze che possono essere elettoralmente vincenti. Thank you very much. I think it's very important that you draw the attention to the necessity that this pillar of social rights has an impact not only on local level but also for what is coming up, the radical change of our society with the industrial revolution, the innovation, the digital revolution and what, what is the need then for social protection. It was part of the opinion of the European Parliament. This brings me to the European Parliament because we often refer to Maria Jean Rodriguez, rightly so, we often refer to our group in the European Parliament and we forget that we have an excellent acting chair of the Employment Committee of the European Parliament, who is from Sweden, Marita Ulfskoch. It's a little bit an unfortunate story that you are the acting chair because a very good friend of us, who is not from our political family, but who is a good social democrat, Thomas Hendel is very ill and cannot fulfill his position, but you stepped in and you stepped in marvelously, I would say. So, Give us a point of view for the relevance of the work now. What will continue to be on the agenda to implement the pillar of social rights? What are the next steps? Please. Uh, I'll take a step back minutes. to start with. Yeah. <laughs> Because I also want to say a few words on, on uh, the social summit in, uh, in Gothenburg. Um, first of all, I'm glad to be here to, to be part of this panel. Uh, and uh, uh, I think it's... Uh, uh, I'm happy when I, I hear what you are saying about the social summit in, in Gothenburg. Uh, I think it, it was uh, an important meeting for us as political group, and I think it will have an importance if we take uh, good decisions the months to come. Uh, it can be an important part of our uh, election campaign on the European level, but also in the member states. Um, and I think that uh, it can be a sort of game changer uh, if we do the right things. We will go back to basics uh, about uh, uh, if people have a job, uh, if people uh, can see that they have a future, uh, if they can see that uh, they don't have to fight so hard just to sort of survive. Uh, they can be human beings again. And uh, uh, especially important, uh, uh, in Gothenburg was that the presence and the role of the social partners. Uh, 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 and that is uh, uh, of extreme importance. <clears throat> uh, what uh, actually was uh, decided was uh, to restart the social dialogue on a European level and in every member state where it's needed. Because when the crisis hit us all, Uh, uh, the social dialogue died in lots of member states. Uh, but now uh, uh, we are back on track, at least in, in some parts of, of uh, the European Union, and I think that it's extremely important for us to see to that we can restart it uh, uh, in every member state. Uh, I think it's, uh, it marks a new momentum 
uh, for the social Europe. I believe that there is a broad understanding uh, in, in uh, the European member states that we have to balance the focus on economic policies uh, with a strong social agenda. And that was also uh, a very clear result of the Gothenburg meeting. Uh, the 20 pr principles of the social pillar is, uh, you could formulate it, it's a good checklist uh, of what we have to work on. And uh, I think that has been uh, uh, very clear during our uh, uh, meeting uh, here in Lisbon. Uh, a good example, just to take one of many good examples, uh, is the question of access to skills. Uh, our political family has to take the fight for education and uh, to ensure enough public funding so that these skills can be developed. We have talked about it during this meeting. We should talk more about it also uh, when we get back home and to Brussels. Uh, uh, the issue of wages is a similar topic. We should fight to give the social partners an increasingly bigger role in wage setting, but also in other parts. Uh, of our political agenda. Um, uh, uh, sometimes I, 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 I get this uh, Joe Hill uh, expression in my head, don't mourn, organize. Uh, some, in some parts of Europe, we are back on that stage after uh, uh, the economic crisis. Out and organize empowered people. Uh, and um, uh, it sounds simple, it's difficult, but we know that it works uh, uh, if we reach the right results. Uh, my view uh, is that the best way to achieve uh, fair wages, uh, it's not uh, uh, political uh, decisions, it's a, a higher level of union organizing to make it simple. The reality is that, uh, well, uh, we can clearly see the correlation between higher wages and strong unions, and this is uh, what we should emphasize. When it comes to the role that the social pillar in the European elections will play, I think we can safely say that it will play different roles in the different countries, uh, uh, just like the debate about Europe in our member states uh, generally looks different. Uh, uh, but. Uh, it must be on the agenda. Uh, uh, in Spain, it might be about youth unemployment. In Sweden, uh, about uh, uh, social uh, issues, uh, other social issues. In Greece, about rebuilding social dialogue. I can give lots of other examples, and you are better on, on doing that, I'm sure. Uh, but can we can use the pillar in a way that also makes it possible for, for uh, our uh, uh, um, uh, differences. Uh, I see that Connie wants me to end, so I'll say that um, uh, the only worries I have that is that we will be talking about policy ideas that people can't relate to. Uh, we already talk about legislation and, and initiatives with incomprehensible names. <laughs> people cannot relate to that around the kitchen table. Our first priority uh, is to uh, be where the discussions already are intense. Uh, and uh, uh, we also uh, have to show results, uh, like uh, uh, our uh, 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 Portuguese uh, mayor uh, uh, described in his first speech, our first day here, why did we win Lisbon? because the unemployment rates uh, were going down. Uh, organized people uh, put all energy into getting people back on track and have a job. Uh, that is how people connect to us. That is what they are asking for. That is what they are saying to us. Do it, do it now. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will not quote the publicity, which is just do it, you know, from where this is. But I think it brings us to, we'll just, thank you very much, Marita, we'll the bridge. Because Marita was saying there's a necessity also to go for wage policies and have strong social partners and let them do their work. 
So, Luca, do you think it's really a breakthrough or is it the first step? And how is this perceived in the constituencies, meaning also in your constituency of the European Trade Union Confederation? Floor is yours. Sorry to say, uh, lo siento, cinco minutos. <laughs> I will try. <laughs> thank you very much, Connie. But first of all, let me thank Antonio Costa and Sergei Stanishev for inviting the European Trade Union Confederation to come to this very important assembly. Uh, we are not only among friends, but we are also among the best allies uh, to push for social Europe, I think, in this room. And we have to be proud, all of us, for what we achieved through the social pillar. The proclamation is a, a great shot, I mean, to make sure that social Europe, the social dimension of, Euro of the European Union, the European social model, the social market economy are back on track in the discussion uh, among Europeans. And we have to be proud and we have also to avoid a temptation that is to say that since the pillar is not binding, since the pillar is not enough, then the pillar is nothing. Uh, you know, if we go for this temptation, we give reason to the ones in the right that think that the pillar should be stopped. And there are a lot of enemies uh, of the pillar among the right ranks, uh, so we have to make sure that the progressives, I mean, support and implement the pillar in the right way. But of course, at the same time, we as trade unions are very pragmatic people. So we have to make sure that some concrete things uh, take place uh, to make sure that then the pillar is properly implemented and, as others said already, uh, brings concrete results to people to change their working life uh, and the conditions more in general of their lives uh, and the lives of their families. Uh, to do that, we need to uh, have, I would say, three preconditions. The first precondition is that we need to implement the pillar First of all, through legislation at the European level. We need more social legislation. The ones that say that we have enough of legislation at the European level don't say the truth. They don't tell you the truth. Because the problem we have at the moment at the European level is that there are no, not the same rights for each and every worker in the European Union. There is still social divergence and there is still uh, lack of protection for a lot of workers. This is the reason why the first element for implementation is that all of us will support the five legislative initiatives that the European Commission is putting in place for the implementation of the pillar. I will not enter into details because we don't have the time, but please, all of you that have a responsibility in this respect to support these five legislative initiatives, please do it. Do it in the Council, do it in the Parliament, uh, the stakeholders should do it in their relationship with the European institutions. We need to make sure that these directives are approved before the end of the term of the current European Commission, because this is the momentum, and the momentum has to be catch up. And the other element... Uh, And the, and the other element to make sure that we have implementation is that we need an action plan for implementation. An action plan means that not only the European Commission, but also the governments at the national level put in place actions, legislation and measures, concrete measures, to make sure that the 20 principles are implemented at the national level. Uh, Mr. Juncker and Stefan Lofeng in Gothenburg took the commitment to report back about the summit to the Council on the 15th of December and to propose to the Council that an action plan should be adopted by the Council. Well, it won't be easy at all for the Council to adopt this action plan, so please help us. Those of you that will attend this Council, those of you that had a voice in the Council, please help us in making sure that an action plan will be in place. The second... The second precondition is the EMU package and the tools that we will have in our hands to change the macroeconomic policies of the European Union. We need to sort out from austerity. If we continue with austerity, there is no chance for the social pillar to live in practice. And the EMU package that the European Commission is going to publish in a few days on the 6th of December can be a great opportunity or can be a great failure. It depends a lot not only on the titles that will be in the package, but as Pierre Moscovici will explain you in a few, in few minutes, uh, it depends on the content and on the approach that we will see in this package. Having an European monetary fund is fundamental, but you know, if this European monetary fund is again an intergovernmental tool, there is no chance, I mean, to support investment at the national level. 
if we have funds uh, to face the shocks, uh, but it's only to intervene after the shocks has happened uh, and not before the shocks happened, well, we don't have any chance to help the member states that are facing major troubles in the Euro European and global economy. And if we simply transpose the fiscal compact into the European law as it is, and we don't have a strong effort to make sure that we can put social rights at the same level of economic freedoms, having some kind of social progress protocol in the fiscal compact, well, it will be a missed opportunity. So again, please help us. Do whatever you can to help the European Commission, or I will say those in the European Commission that are pushing for a communitarian approach, first of all, Pierre Moscovici, in making sure that the EMU package will be a positive one. And third and last element, we need to make sure that we have not only an economic semester, but a social semester. The European Commission promised that the social pillar should be incorporated in the European semester and that the 20 principles will be the basis, also in legal terms, for the country-specific recommendations in the next cycle for the semester. We are watching that this can happen or not. And it depends, again, a lot on the efforts that all of us will put in place to make this happening. The social pillar is the last chance for social Europe, as Jean-Claude Juncker said. Well, it's our responsibility to make it happening. So please be together, stand together. We can make it if we are stronger and if we face together the challenges that we have in front of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Luca. Yes, indeed, together stronger, and together we have to fight for having not only a social scoreboard in the European semester, but to have a real social semester. And, well, the other thing is indeed the question of the social progress protocol. It is, we have been fighting for, for long years already, never managed to get it, but we need something which is legally binding. If not, it is only at the stage of promises. We are a little bit behind of time, so it's unfortunate. <laughs> But nevertheless, we will take time to listen now at, uh, for the, as the last speaker to Commissioner Andrew Kaitis, Commissioner for Health and Food Safety. And I think it is good that you are here because, well, yesterday and before yesterday, we got many feedbacks from different parties from different countries. And they all gave a definition also that the question of the social policies include the access to health, to health care, and the access to quality food. So there's a large opinion. So I think it is good that you are with us and also to tell us what do you see as the relevance of the social pillar for the sector where you engage within the European Commission. It's a pity to say also for you equal treatment or unequal Thank treatment. You. Thank you very Five much minutes. indeed. First of all, I would like to say I'm so happy to be here, comrades, friends, especially youngest comrades. You know, <laughs> progressive Europe. Here is progressive Europe, renewal, but it's not enough. Rebuilding and reshaping in line of our vision on, about democratic socialism. I like very much word democratic socialism, not only social Europe, because uh, uh, right wing, they use social Europe, those liberals also use social Europe. But when we are speaking about social Europe, we are speaking about much biggest vision, about democratic socialism we started in Frankfurt on Main, and now we can also renew our ideological background and to be really very, very courageous in fighting. Today you see very interesting picture. Some, some nationalists, they use our diversity, this uniting Europe. We need to unite Europe in our diversity. And social pillar is very powerful instrument to unite us all having in mind our, our real cultural diversity because diversity is our asset. But we need to fight on human rights. We need to fight on implementation of social pillar. And thank you very much indeed. You mentioned all things because I, I fully in, in, in line with you speaking about possibilities to, to implement those commission proposals. I ask Maria Zhao not only presenting this brilliant report but also pushing European Parliament in favor to, to adopt our proposals till end of 2018 or before European elections. Let me stress only my, my very 
uh, narrow uh, uh, issue. Principle of 16 in, in social pillar is called everyone has the right to timely access to affordable, preventive, and creative health care of good quality. It is achievement of our socialist commissioners in, in pushing it into our social pillar. And now you have good opportunity to read State of Health in the EU, and you have 28 profiles. Uh, state of health in uh, Lithuania, Portugal, and so on. And then you can see how to, it is important to guide our activities, introducing those principles, targets, and indicators in real life, proposing to people who have health in your pockets. It will be a really brilliant idea to have health in our pockets and to achieve better conditions because health is quality of our life, is human capital. Thank you. Thank you very much. Health is human capital. And to improve our health, we now desert this podium and leave the, the space to the other. Thank you very much. I think the, the party is not over. I'm not speaking on the political party, but the work on the social pillar. We have to work on implementation. We have to continue to fight for a real social semester and really make some steps. And I think I'm very confident. Yeah, some, somebody said this morning we are at the crossroads. I think it was Udo. And I think Udo may be also a fan of, of uh, Jimi Hendrix. Yeah? You remember Jimi Hendrix at the crossroads? <laughs> Perhaps with this energy at the crossroads, we have to work and fight to get it implemented and to go to the European election and say, look, you needed it, you have dreamed it, we have made it. This is like it should go. So thank you very much. We continue. It's to Maria Zhao to take the floor now.